Hello and welcome to the Learn to Crochet the Easy Way Masterclass. This is a 14 day course designed to help you feel confident with the basics of crochet and get you making the most beautiful things you've ever dreamed of. I'm your instructor Sigoni. In today's lesson, we are going to be crocheting the checkered washcloth. This is part two of how to read crochet patterns. In part one, we talked about all the things that you need to know about reading crochet patterns, especially before the pattern actually starts. So if you missed that video, be sure to go check that one out first and then come back over to this one. Before we get started, make sure to download a free sample of the Learn to Crochet ebook and that will be linked in the description box below. For each video in this course, you will find a related page inside the workbook. This workbook is 70 plus pages filled with full lessons, step-by-step -step picture tutorials, both left and right-handed, checklists, reference sheets, and patterns to both of the projects we will be making in this course. You will also gain access to all of the videos ad-free inside the Teachable platform. Today we are going to crochet a washcloth together, and while we're doing that, we're going to go over each step inside the pattern to help you familiarize yourself with reading patterns and actually making a physical product. If you decided to sign up for the free sample of my Learn to Crochet ebook, this pattern will be included in that free sample. So you can follow along as we're going over this pattern, and if you can't pull it up, it's okay. I will still be leaving a snippet of each row as we go. That way it's easy for you to follow along. For this project, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and a medium weight yarn. I used a 100% cotton yarn for this project because I'm using it as a washcloth. If you're using it as a washcloth, you can grab 100% cotton just because that's the best kind of fiber for this type of project. But if you're just making this to practice, you can use any yarn, any hook that you have on hand, as long as that hook corresponds with the yarn. I will leave all the materials that I used in the description box below. All right, grab your materials and let's get started. To get started here, we have the cover page. The cover page of a pattern shows all of the information that you need to get started. So we have the pattern name, the designer, the materials needed, abbreviations used, notes, finished measurements, and gauge. Personally, I like to include both US and UK terms on my patterns, but not everybody does this. So first, let's go over the materials. The materials we need for the checkered washcloth are one skein of Lion Brand's Re-Up yarn, and you can use any yarn for this project. This is a medium weight number four, but while you're practicing, you can use any yarn that you have on hand. In the future, the best kind of yarn to use for washcloths have some sort of a cotton blend, so either 100% cotton or at least mostly cotton. But as we're practicing, an acrylic yarn is totally fine to use. You will also need a five millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and a pair of scissors. Now let's take a look at the abbreviations. We have the chain stitch, single crochet, double crochet, repeat, and stitch. And of course we have our US and UK terms right underneath. So if you're from the UK and I'm using one of my US terms, then you can easily reference back to see which stitch we're using. Now for the notes, it says chain three at the beginning of the row counts as a stitch. This is important to note because we'll be counting our stitches at the end of each row and we want to make sure that we're counting the right stitches, but I'll explain that more as we go. The finished measurements for this washcloth is 11 inches in length and eight and three quarter inches in width. And the gauge is 16 stitches times 12 rows equals a four inch square. And that's it for the cover page. And now we've reached the instructions. So the first thing you'll see is that it says chain 36. Normally on a crochet pattern, it's not going to tell you to create a slip knot. It's sort of just implied. So anytime that you see chain 36 as your beginning instructions, go ahead and create your slip knot first and then create your chain. So for this pattern, we're going to chain 36. So remember, we're going to yarn over or wrap our yarn around your hook, have your hook facing down, and pull that strand through. So that's our first chain. So we're gonna chain 36. So we have two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and we have 36 chains. Our next set of instructions says row one, SC, which stands for single crochet, in the second chain from your hook. So that's what we're gonna do first. So remember that this loop on your hook does not count as a stitch. So we have our first chain and our second chain. So insert your hook into the second chain, yarn over and pull that strand through, and you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. And that's your first single crochet. Now when we read row one together, it says single crochet in the second chain from the hook, which we just did, and each of the next four chains. So since we already single crocheted into the second chain, we're going to continue single crocheting into the next four chains. So here's our next chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So that's one, next chain, single crochet, that's two, and again, three, and four. So we have five single crochet total. We have this first one, so one, two, three, four, five. Next it says BC, which is double crochet, in each of the next five chains. So we're going to yarn over our hook first to create that double crochet. Insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's your first double crochet. Now we'll double crochet four more times. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now let's do that three more times. So now we have five single crochet and five double crochet. Now it says to single crochet into each of the next five chains. So again, we're going to single crochet into the next chain, and now I'm going to single crochet into the next four chains. So that will be five chains total. So again, we have five single crochet, five double crochet, five single crochet. Now this is where it can get tricky. Our next section says repeat from the first asterisk to the end of the row, ending with the double asterisks. So our first asterisk will go up to our first line where it says double crochet in each of the next five chains. So it says to repeat from there. So next we're going to double crochet into the next five chains, and then we'll follow that with single crochet into the next five chains. And we're going to repeat that back and forth pattern until we reach the end of the row. So now I'm going to double crochet into the next five chains. And now I'm going to single crochet into the next five chains. And again, I'm going to double crochet into the next five chains. And then for the last five chains, we're going to single crochet. Yeah. 
Now see on the screen here where it says ending with the two asterisks. So because that was our last instruction, the single crochet in each of the next five chains, that's the repeat that we should have ended on. And we did. Now before we move on to row two, at the end of row one, you'll see that there is a 35 in parentheses. This 35 means that you should have 35 stitches in this row. Remember that counting your stitches is very important if you want to achieve straight rows. So make sure that you go back and count your 35 stitches. We're going to be counting this V stitch here. So this counts as one stitch. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, and thirty five. So we have 35 stitches in this first row, which means we are right on track. Now moving on to row two, the first instruction says to chain three. So we're going to chain one, two, three. And then it says turn. This means to turn your work. So sometimes a pattern will say turn, other times it will say turn your work. So we have our chain three here, and we're looking at the back of our work. Next it says, counts as a double crochet here and throughout the pattern. Sometimes only the notes section will tell you that a chain counts as a stitch, so make sure that you check the notes. But here it's telling us again that this chain three here counts as a double crochet. Now it says skip first single crochet, so skip this one, and double crochet in each of the next four single crochet. So yarn over to start your double crochet, Skip this first single crochet and insert your hook into the next stitch. Now remember, we're going under both of these loops here. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And so it said to double crochet into the next four single crochet. So that was our first one. So now we have our chain three and the four double crochet on top of our single crochet. Now the next instruction says single crochet in each of the next five double crochet. So here is our five double crochet from the previous round and this is where we'll be working our single crochet. So insert your hook into the next stitch So now let's do that four more times. All right, so we have, we just made five single crochet and now double crochet in each of the next five single crochet. So again, here's our five single crochet. Now again, we have another repeat from the first asterisk to the end of the row, ending with the double asterisk. So we're going to repeat single crochet into each of the next five double crochet. And now double crochet into the next five stitches. Now we're going to repeat that pattern again, single crochet into the next five stitches, then double crochet into the last five stitches. And don't forget this last stitch here, it's a little slanted, it can be hard to see. There, and that is our second row of the checkered washcloth.
And again, it says repeat from first asterisk to end of row, ending with the double asterisk. Our last instruction was the double crochet in each of the next five single crochet. So that's what we should have ended with, and we did. Now again, at the end of this row, you'll see the 35 in the parentheses. So make sure you have 35 stitches at the end of your row before moving on to row three. Now for row three, we'll first chain one and turn. Then we will single crochet into the next five double crochet. Double crochet into each of the next five single crochet. Single crochet into each of the next five double crochet. And then repeat from the first asterisk to the end of the row, ending with the double asterisk. So double crochet into each of the next five single crochet. And repeat that pattern two more times. Now remember that our chain three at the beginning of the last row counts as a double crochet. So make sure you don't miss this stitch and single crochet into the top chain of the chain three. So here you can see our single crochet from the first row and this is our chain three from row two. So we have our chain one, chain two, and chain three and you'll single crochet into that top chain. Now the rest of the instructions say repeat rows two and three alternatively until you reach row 32. You should end on a row two. So because we just ended row three, we're going to repeat row two. So row two says to chain three and turn your work and then double crochet into the next four and so on. So after you repeat row two, go ahead and repeat row three and then two and three and two and three until you reach row 32. And I'll meet you back at row 32 to show you what to do next. And now we're going to tie off our work. So remember, take a couple inches, cut your yarn, then yarn over and pull your tail all the way through. And remember when it said you should end on a row two? Well, our row two started with a chain three and ended with the five double crochet in the last five stitches. So that's how you know you ended on a row two. Now, once we tie off, we're going to weave in our ends. So I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and just go through my stitches. Whenever we did our swatches, I explained that there really is no science to this. Just find where you can insert your hook and try to push it in three different directions and you should be good. But these washcloths are really great to practice with and even if you make a mistake or you have a loose end, you may not want to gift them, but you can still use them. So just go ahead, weave in your ends and then cut your yarn once you're done. And you can't even see it. To make sure that you have the correct amount of rows, come all the way back down to your first row. Now this is where we first tied our slip knot and began our chain. So this is where we're going to start counting. Right here is our first row. And remember that our first row is a little squiggly. So we have our single crochets, then our double crochets get a little bigger, and then single, double. The easiest way to count these is to count by the double crochets. So in this pattern, we double crochet, and then in the next row, we have our single crochet on top of that. Then we have our double crochet, single, double, and so on. So really what you can do is take your single crochet row, so that's row one, and then your double crochet is row two, and then we'll just count by twos along the way. So here's row one, row two, now I'm gonna skip to my next double crochet because I know that there's a row in between. So we have two, four, 
6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. So we counted in twos on our double crochet sections because we know that there's a single crochet row in between. I hope that makes sense, but that is how I count my rows. Now, if you're new, you just completed your first project and that is so exciting. I am so pumped for you. If this wasn't your first project and you've been crocheting before, let me know in the comments something that you learned from this pattern. And if this was your first time completing a project, let me know in the comments so we can celebrate together. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to make the half double crochet stitch. So this is another one of the four basic stitches that we will learn in this course. Again, check the description to download a free sample of my Learn to Crochet ebook. And as always, I'm your instructor, Sigoni, and I will see you in the next one.